following is a special presentation of Raycom Sports, home to regional college football and basketball. This was the scene just less than two hours ago. Coach K and his Devils making their way into the RBC Center for the backyard brawl with North Carolina State. Intensity will be found throughout the building as the Blue Devils and the Wolfpack do battle. Raycom sports coverage of ACC basketball rolls on. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Brando. By my side, the big, tall Virginian, Dan Bonner. Let's get right to it, big fella. The Ford keys to the game. The Duke Blue Devils, Tim, are a team that has not shot the ball well, so far well on the road, so I think they need to do the extras. Offensive rebounds, turnovers, get some contributions off the bench. For the North Carolina State Wolfpack, I think it's all about balance offensively. They have to have contributions both from the interior and the perimeter if they're going to have success tonight. A real storyline to tonight's game is the health of Kyle Singler. We saw this at Cameron Indoor Stadium on Sunday. His wrist does still have the brace on it, but he shot it smoothly in warm-ups. We'll add the tip when we come back. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Food Line, by Chick-fil-A, by your Carolina Ford dealer, by Geico, by Pepsi, and by RBC Bank. ACC Basketball is presented in high definition. We're available by Raycom Sports. Wolfpack have made their way out a capacity crowd on hand here at the RBC Center. Let's take a look at our Food Lion starting lineups for the Blue Devils. The big three with one of the brothers, Plumley, who played very well against Wake on Sunday night, and Lance Thomas, consistent contributor, very athletic on the front block for the Blue Devils. For the Wolfpack of NC State, Javier Gonzalez has struggled of late. Needs a better game tonight. Arnold again, the Bostonian to go with Woods, Smith, everything runs through him. And of course, the other fifth starter for this team, the youngster Scott Wood, freshman from Marion, Indiana. Our officials for tonight's game, a veteran crew, Brian Kersey, Bernard Clinton, and Joe Lindsay, and the opening tap control to NC State. The Devils start in the man-to-man. -man. Everything runs through Smith, nice tough down. The backdoor cut, everything but a finish from Dennis Horner. Horner's got that big brace on his knee. He's got a deep bone contusion in that knee, and it really hurts his ability to push off. Shire feeding Thomas, the extra pass to Singler, and he's fouled on the reach by Tracy Smith. And that's bad news for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Tracy Smith has tended to get in some foul trouble early in some games, and certainly he can't afford that today. He's the main inside threat against the Blue Devils. There you see that brace. He went immediately after the game to have an X-ray on Sunday night. Mike Javinsky and I ran into him at the uh, hotel across the street, the Washington Duke, and uh, he said he thought he'd be okay then, Dan, and he, in fact, did look very good, I thought, in warm-ups, didn't you? He was getting x-rayed at the Washington Duke Hotel? <laughs> no, that was, he went by the Washington Duke with his parents out. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just down the street. And down the wow. street, Carolina goes down. It's official. Wake Forest, 82 to 69. Ishmael Smith and C.J. Harris combined for 20 each. So 40 between those two. And North Carolina has lost three in a row. It's been a while since that's happened. Conference play. Smith, nice work on the low block. You just cannot allow him to take a dribble like that and power his way to the basket. He's impossible to stop in there. Got to get some help. Smith working on Gonzalez. Uses his body against the deuce. That's a good move by Nolan Smith. North Carolina State not noted as a shot blocking team and Tracy Smith already with one foul. Nice job to just attack the basket. Horner's a tough matchup for the Duke Blue Devils because he's so versatile. Again, can really do a good job getting to the basket. Didn't try there. Probably has a quickness advantage over Lance Smith. 
You mentioned Gonzalez's struggles. He's really had them the last three games. There's Horner on the wing. Got a bit of a bump. No whistle. And an air ball. The end result. Singler. I think he was setting up for an alley-oop. It was rejected, and then Thomas picked up the garbage deuce. His first bucket at 6-2, to two, Blue Devils. Duke has been able to get the ball to the basket so far in this game, and North Carolina State has to find a way to keep them out on the perimeter. Duke shooting the three very poorly in, against ACC competition. You don't want them to take the ball to the goal. Smith was waiting to see if there would be a double team. There was not, but a foul inside. As we mentioned, Duke trying to take the ball to the basket, and Singler makes a great play. His pass got tipped away, but he didn't give up on the ball. It was Singler who then tipped it to Lance Thomas. Different kind of assist right there for Kyle Singler. The youngsters for North Carolina State of late have really performed well. It's been one of their struggles as you see Smith getting involved off the nice dish. He's got four. All of them for North Carolina State so far. Now, Farnold again has great quickness, and if he can get to the basket, that's going to create some problems for Duke. Smith on a blow-by against Gonzalez. Again, another basket taken on a drive. Duke just slashing to the goal. North Carolina State has to figure out a way to keep them out on the perimeter. Sidney Lowe always breaks out the red jacket for the matchups in the triangle area. Corner. Too strong. Singler with a quick release to Shire. Oh, nice play by DeGan. He just went right through Shire with that. Count it! Farnold DeGan with an outstanding defensive play against arguably the best point guard in the country so far this year. North Carolina State trying to pressure. Nice step in there by Tracy Smith. Two quick turnovers now by Duke. Choosing not to help on Smith on the low block. And he makes him pay. Uh, you give Smith that kind of time and opportunity in there, he is going to score a lot of points in this game. Well, the message is clear, isn't it? They're not double teaming. No help, at least for now, on Tracy Smith. Uh, it's hard to help down from the outside on Tracy Smith when Scott Wood is on the same side of the court. An offensive foul against the Devils. Smith had the chicken wing out. Tim, that's what we talked about. North Carolina State in the presence of the person of Javier Gonzalez that time doing a great job moving his feet, preventing the penetration. Three turnovers now. Committed by the Devils. Wolfpack four for seven from the fours. Gonzalez looks to make the move. Gonzalez during this stretch where he's really struggled. 17 turnovers, only 10 assists. And Howell, again, one of the youngsters that's played well, he turns it over inside. Highly competitive start. Did you expect anything less? There are many common bonds between these two teams. One of the best known, Vic Bubis, an NC State guard from 48 to 51, and an assistant under every case for eight years. Then, in 1960, he became the Duke head coach and left 10 years later as one of the most successful coaches in ACC history. One of his uh, championship teams, in fact, his first was honored a couple of weeks back. Vic Bubis, and really not just with Duke. You think of the 50s banners that he was a part of here at NC State. But in addition to that, the commissioner of the uh, Sun Belt Conference really helped to uh, energize that league, as you see Mason Plumley immediately into the game and his athleticism felt it's 10 to 8 Duke. Well, you really need to get in front of him. Talk about energy. <laughs> I mean, he just dribbled the ball down the court and nobody got anywhere near him. Sidney Lowe went down the bench and grabbed Vandenberg and threw him up to the scorer's table. He is very upset. I think he's upset with uh, Richard Howell. Howell. Offensive foul. Now, this is the kind of thing that 
drive coach is crazy. You talk about stopping the ball. Well, usually you're talking about stopping a guard, but this is just one of your post guys. Tracy Smith is the last guy left, and he already has one foul, so that's actually a smart move by Smith to get out of the way. Smith sits down along with Gonzalez. Javier's got to get out of his funk. These last five games, it has been a real struggle. Singler. Zubek on the offensive glass. He's rejected. Vandenberg got a hand on that, and then the turnover steps. Tim, that's what we talked about before the game, though. This is a Duke team that has done a great job on the offensive boards in the last couple of games, and that's a pretty good thing because they have not shot the ball well, particularly in road games, although the sample's small. This is their own, only their third actual road game. Here's steal by Shire on a dangerous pass that was released as you take a look at some other scores we touched on that win for Wake Forest Pittsburgh was down for the first time in yep. Big East play Pitt has really had a heck of a season one of the surprise teams in the country last time the North Carolina lost three in a row Dan was back in 2003 actually uh, five in a row at that particular time this is the first time they've lost three consecutively since then and of course they come in here to play NC State next Tuesday night in the game that we'll have for you. We're on most of these Raycom sports stations across the ACC. Allen sitting down after the second. Haven't heard a thing from Scott Wood tonight on the offensive end. He's guarding Kyle Singer on this end. Shire was actually ooping that one for Zubak, and he, he never went for the ball. Shire then elects to take the three, and he drains it. That looked like a bad shot, perhaps, at home. That was an alley-oop pass that Zubak did not attack. Get those big guys in there. Sometimes your best offense is to throw it up and see if they can go get it. Julius Mays, the sophomore from Marion, Indiana, now operating at the top for North Carolina State. Vandenberg setting the pick, trying to work pick and roll. Well, we talked about North Carolina State trying to get some inside-outside balance. They haven't had it yet. Well, Horner, Horner forcing the issue. We'll get to the stripe after leaving that prior on the front rim. Now, Zubek, he doesn't realize that that's a pass to him, but he's battling for position on the inside, and he gets the rebound, and the result is the, uh, the white shirts have all collapsed around the ball, and John Shire's wide open for a three-pointer. Corner at the free-throw line. <laughs> Dawkins, Andre Dawkins, will come into the game for the first time. For the Blue Devils, you see the... Uh, Struggles for him in the last two games. Andre Dawkins, the freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, just into the game for Shire. Another very athletic player for this Blue Devils team who's played very well early on for Mike Krzyzewski. North Carolina State has had a little bit of success with this full court pressure. Duke has not appeared comfortable handling the ball against it. Boy, Zubek got caught for an yeah, illegal screen. Did. Sure did. Those are going to come sometimes, and Mike Krzyzewski's approach offensively, he's well aware of that. Uh, Duke has really good depth on the inside. They keep bringing big guys at you. What's the biggest difference in this Blue Devils edition this season from a year ago is the depth in their front line and the athletic capability, particularly when Mason Plumley is on the floor. He's got talent facing the basket as well as with his back to the basket. Arnold again. He's fouled. Plumley got him. First on, or actually the second on Mason Plumley since checking into the game. And he'll be replaced by Lance Thomas. John Shire also will check in. Arnold DeGand is a guy who, with his speed, can really create some opportunities for NC State with some penetration to the basket. And he's shown us that a couple of times early. So you see Shire and Thomas checking in, replacing Singler and Plumley, and also Vandenberg sitting down for North Carolina State. Now, Tracy Smith is back in, and again, we'll remind you, he has picked up a foul very early, so he's got one foul. He's got to be a little bit careful on the defensive end. Josh Davis, number 22 for North Carolina State, in for the first time as well. The freshman native son of Raleigh.
Nice work again by State. Blue Devils uh, uncharacteristically almost have a turnover per minute here in the opening half. That's their sixth in just less than seven minutes play. NC State's pressure really is causing a few problems for the Duke Blue Devils. Davis gives it up to DeGan. Nice look to Smith. You're right about Farnell DeGan's ability. That quick burst could have taken it himself, but a wonderful dish there. And boy, another turnover. Dennis Horner is doing a great job for the NC State Wolfpack on the point of that pressure, despite the fact that he's really bothered by a knee problem. Farnell DeGan comes wheeling off the screen, and then Zubek goes to the ball. Nobody rotates down and picks up Tracy Smith. And Smith did what a big guy is supposed to do. If your guy leaves, you go to the basket. If he can stay eligible tonight for the better part of this game, North Carolina State really believes they've got a great shot at winning this game. That has been the uh, only problem for him. Early foul difficult. Corner is packed by Plumley. Miles Plumley picks it up. And right at the moment, NC State seems to have Duke back on its heels. The Blue Devils reacting rather than acting, and NC State has the initiative. <laughs> ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Toyota. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner here at the RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Big night along Tobacco Road. The big four getting after it here in the triangle area. Wake Forest to win around the road. Duke just a few miles away making uh, their appearance here at NC State. Wolf back in the middle of a 7 0 spurt. And NC State changes the pressure a little bit. Farnell Farn began out on the point. Where Tracy Smith got away with one there. Shire finding Plumley. That's a block. Horner will pick up the foul, his first. Shows you how tough Horner is, though. He goes and tries to take the charge, despite the fact that if he gets hit in that knee, it's likely to be about the most painful thing you can imagine. He tries to get in position and really takes it in the gut. Or, or somewhere close. Yes. It hurt as he hit the deck. Smith, oh, what a move. But he's rejected. Great recovery by the state defense. Davis. Plumley gets the rebound for the Blue Devils. Has a great job by DeGan to push the ball up the court. Davis just couldn't finish. Single. See, when you make a mistake against Duke, when you don't convert on a fast break situation, they're running the ball right back down your throat. They were late. That time Davis late getting it to Smith. And now Plumley's got him covered up. You know, when you miss an opportunity to get it to the post, you got to feed and fan the big fella, don't you, Davis? Absolutely. We're tied at 15. In a tie game, Tracy Smith has been a dominant factor on the inside. He does a great job getting that strong body right up against you. Steps to the basketball in the open area. But again, the strong body right up against the defender. Locking it in the basket and then following when his man leaves. He's had a great season for North Carolina State. And the Wolfpack have been at their best when he has scored effectively inside. The defense has dropped down to cover him, and then they've gotten some baskets from the perimeter. On the other end, the Blue Devils as a team have six field goals, Dan, and yet only one assist. So most of their buckets have come quick, and they've taken it right to the rack on their own. Smith over Plumley. Right on cue, he's five for five, and the pack lead by two. He is very dangerous when he gets the ball inside and has that much time. Shire trying to get away from Williams running the curl. Wood gives him a little help. 
Singler where the ball fake tries to pass it to Thomas, but it's locked away last touched by Wood. The last road game uh, that we remember, of course, from Duke was that uh, loss at Georgia Tech. And you know, you think about it, Singler had a horrible shooting game that afternoon. Other than that, I think uh, Coach K was reasonably satisfied with the way his team played. Smith gets the rebound. As we now know a lot more about Georgia Tech, they beat uh, North Carolina and Duke in successive weeks. Tracy Smith, all of the iron is kind. He's six for six, and they lead by four. I was just about to say, if you're Duke, you'd rather have him shooting it out there than close to the basket, but he knocked that one down, too. Probably that's a walk. On the defensive end, Tracy Smith really battling on the board, just takes the ball away from Plumley, And then on the other end, Plumley backing off because he doesn't want Smith to penetrate to the basket, and Smith knocks down the jump shot. That's what you call being hard to guard, Tim. Yeah. Tracy Smith takes a seat. Ten and a half remaining. Hydrate himself. Has Scott Wood taken a shot tonight? No. That was an over and back, by the way. I think uh, North Carolina State thought, C.J. Williams thought perhaps the ball had been tipped by Shire and it did not. It's the fourth turnover by the Wolfpack. No, Wood has not uh, looked at it. You know, I'm curious, Dan, do you think one of the reasons why we've not seen any double downs on Smith is because at times NC State is late finding him? I don't think it's because NC State is late finding him. I think it's because Duke has decided to guard him man-to-man -man because they don't want North Carolina State to kill him with three. Right, right. So far, we haven't been able to find out because when Smith's gotten it, it's gone to the hole. Foul goes against Javier Gonzalez, his first. Well, Tracy Smith has, coming in, North Carolina State played 17 games, and he has 18 assists, so he's not passing it out of there very often. <laughs> That's right. Singler. Out there, Zubek gets the offensive board. Shire left wide open. That's rare when he misses one with that much freedom. And a foul spotted Vandenberg, I think, got uh, hooked up with uh, Zubek. Zubek is just doing a great job on the inside. Well, our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. Best uh, ACC road winning percentage. And Vic Bubas, whom we mentioned earlier, boy, he had it going on during the time he was there. Overlooked, I think, historically by many in the country. You out of bounds. Out of bounds was Duke. Ball last touched by Thomas down there. It will be North Carolina State basketball. As you would expect, Tim, Tim, tremendous energy in this game. These teams really going at one another. When you don that jacket, you know your team's got intensity. He wears it well, though. Certainly looks uh, sharp tonight, as does Tracy Smith. Well, that was a bad pass that time by Javier Gonzalez. Duke is one for their last seven after a five for nine shooting start. Boy, Zubek never looked at the basket, Tim. All, all he had to do was turn and lay it over the rim. Working over Smith, and the jump hook does not go. Gonzalez clears it, looking to push. Williams pulls up. I thought they missed Smith that time. I agree with you. Give him the ball. Nolan Smith on the other end. Well, he may have tipped it inside the cylinder. And uh, Joe Lindsay agrees right on top of that call. I don't think he needed to follow it, but he no, did. I don't think he needed to follow it either, but he's just trying to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> please, 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 please. Oh, no, no, no. I did, did, did. Oh, boy. That's... Uh... <laughs> That's where Duke's had success, though, Tim, is driving the ball to the basket, where the Blue Devils have struggled, is turning the ball over. They've got more turnovers than field goals. That's Thomas trying to keep up with Tracy Smith now. Horner, that's a mismatch over Nolan Smith. Nice idea by Horner to take advantage of that matchup. 21-15, North Carolina State, their largest lead of the night. 
Shire, a runner. Too high, but he got bumped. Well, he really did. He got pushed from behind by Williams. I mean, that wasn't even delicate. <laughs> Williams really did push him. This is a very difficult shot by Shire. Williams trying to catch up with him, and Williams just puts the hand on and shoves him. I was talking with uh, Shire before the game tonight, Dan, and I asked him about the Plumley brothers and the impact that he's had, uh, they've had on this team. It's been immense. Coming up at halftime, we'll have analysis, highlights, stats, and more on the Hardy's halftime report. John said, you know, you think about the addition of Mason Plumley to what Miles can also do. They really carried Duke early in the Wake Forest game. Shire didn't have a bucket until the final field goal of the first half, and yet Duke led that game by eight at the intermission. Duke had 20 offensive rebounds in that game, and when you're getting yourself 20 extra opportunities, usually good things happen. There they are. Mason to the left, Miles to the right. to four scoring run in the last six minutes plus. Horner feeling it. Oh yeah. But again, he's mismatched that time against Dawkins. Recognizes, goes right to the goal. Smith gets a quickie though. Duke comes right over the top. Fast breaking off a made field goal. Nolan has six in the lead. Back down to four for NC State. And Wood gets it quickly and gives it up. Singler is checking him. That may have a little something to do with it. Boy, again, Horner with a mismatch inside. This time, Shire's on it. Gonzalez with the clock winding down. Wow. Well, if that lights him up, then look out. His first bucket with 7.15 remaining in the lead is seven. D.J. Williams again was sort of a giveaway foul that time. Well, you're right, Tim. You want to be aggressive, but there's no reason for that kind of play that far from the basket. I think the emotion got the most of the sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Timeout. They're hitting the deck in Raleigh. Be sure to check out RaycomSports.com. Are you ready for G-Man's Corner? Where you'll find Mike Jaminski's thoughts on ACC basketball. And don't miss his critically acclaimed video blog, G-Tube. Oh, it's must-see TV, must-see internet, no doubt about it. And on Thursdays, Danielle Trotta's Fast Break provides an inside look at ACC basketball with highlights and more. That's all on RaycomSports.com. Now, a shout out to Rick Burleson. Oh, Tom Burleson, I beg your pardon. <laughs> he played for the Red played for the Red Sox. Absolutely. <laughs> Red is the yeah. primary color, but that's right. Exactly. Tom Burleson will be honored uh, at halftime. I was so caught up in the G-Man promo. I uh, I lost it there. That's understandable. I apologize. <laughs> game has been played inside the three-point arc. Only two three-point baskets made in the game, one by each team. Corner from downtown. Okay. Now there's three. Ten in the game for Dennis Horner. The Jersey boy getting it done. Well, he's got ten and Smith has ten. Thomas, have it slapped away by Horner. He'll get called for the reach in. Tim, interestingly enough, we're talking about Smith and Horner. NC State has had two guys carrying the ball to the scoring load. For Duke, it's been Nolan Smith. He's six for seven. The rest of the team only four for ten. Nolan has just been a quiet assassin this year, Dan, for the, the Blue Devils. I think so many people have noticed the impact of John Shire around the country, and understandably so. But Nolan Smith, I believe, has responded to a little criticism, some of it not as deserved from a year ago, by being a, a quality off guard all season long just delivering the goods game in and game out his his line is always good at two well certainly he and shire are the, among the top backcourts in the country Absolutely. They've, they've really really been good i think because they've clearly defined their roles this year 
has a lot to do with it. That's now eight offensive rebounds in the game for the Duke Blue Devils. North Carolina State just has one. Field goal shooting percentages, which you witnessed, uh, certainly on the side of the pack, as Singler gets his sixth point of the night. It's 29 to 22. Let's see if North Carolina State tries to go back to Tracy Smith. Gonzalez. I think he thought again that time Smith was going to make a move for an alley oop, and it didn't happen. Lance Thomas was doing a pretty good job staying between Smith and the basket, and I think that was more a hope than actually a plan by Gonzalez. Uh oh, I left my feet. I want to make this look like a pass. That's what you're saying. Mason Plumley out there. Thomas the rebound. Another offensive rebound. Singler trying to post up inside against Wood. We got it. We got the easy one. Mason Plumley did a nice job of finding him. 29-24. Eight points now for Singler. Just like that, the 10-point lead carved in half by the Blue Devils. Timeout taken by Sidney Lowe. Not at all happy with that setup offensively. There have been some great games through the years between these two. And Champion presents How You Play. Collins for three in the win. Oh, the iron is timed to Chris Collins. And it's a one-point lead for Duke. Marshall, the distance. Oh, the iron unkind. And that's our Champion feature celebrating the history and traditions of the ACC. Champion, it's How You Play. There's Chris. Yeah, we were talking before the game about that, that game played at the old Reynolds Coliseum, and Mike, you remembered it well from his senior year. They had gone through some tough times at Duke uh, that particular time in his career, and uh, it's a special moment. It was for me, too, just <laughs> being there. That was a great, great place to watch a basketball game. And, and it was, by the way, the first... Did I say, did I say Mike? I apologize, Dan. My bad. But uh, what makes it so much fun, Dan, and for me, is that to have seen a young man like Chris Collins emerge and mature as a college basketball coach, he'll one day be a head coach. Just as uh, Wojciechowski and Nate James will do as well. And this is one thing that North Carolina State can ill afford, and that is to turn the ball over. Maybe that's why they turned it over. The ball was wet. <laughs> Here comes NC State. They've had great success with this pressure. You know, the court gets wet over at Cameron a lot. I guess the basketball gets wet over here. Nolan Smith, a little out of control that time. Singler gets the offensive board. Howell had it, but lost it. Retrieved by Gonzalez. Wow. Duke is just all over the offensive board. They haven't really been able to convert many of those into baskets. Gonzalez. Well, you, you're right on, Dan. That's what's keeping the Blue Devils within reach. Well, that time, everybody was so concerned about Tracy Smith, who set the screen. Nobody <laughs> paid any attention to Javier Gonzalez, and he just took it right to the goal. Boy, Singler is posting up inside. They missed him. That is a tremendous mismatch for Duke on the interior. And they spot a foul. It will go against Arnold again. We'll be right back. Official timeout. Ronnie Shablik is one of the legends of the ACC. He averaged 18 and a half points, 16.8 rebounds per game as a Wolfpack center from 54 to 56. His grandson, Shavlik Randolph, you may recall, was down the road at Duke as a forward. What a career he had now at the next level. And uh, there you see Shavlik along with uh, Vic Molladen, who, by the way, will be honored at halftime, along with Tom, don't call me, Rick Burleson at halftime. It's uh, me, Bob Brando, with Mike Bonner. <laughs> Here at the RBC Center. Just kidding. John Shire at the free throw line. 
You know, Shire is a guy that even when he struggles with his outside shot, he does so many other things to help the team. And one of those things is his ability to get to the free throw line. Of course, he's a deadly three point or deadly free throw shooter. North Carolina State by five. Not as many touches of late, Dan, for Tracy Smith. Duke doing a better job putting pressure on the basketball. And that time, Mason Plumley came over and double-teamed Smith before the ball could be thrown in. So they are doing a nice job keeping the ball out of his hands. At that time, they tried to force it into him, leading to a turnover. Sixth of the game for North Carolina State. Shire giving it up to Mason Plumley. That's Nolan Smith's spot on the floor right there. And he rattles it home. 31-29. So after trailing by 10, just like that, the Devils down two. With a 10-2 run of their own. Scott Wood still hadn't shot the ball. He's been really well defended. Degan. Arnold Degan with a three. 34-29. Seven in the game. For the Bostonian. Singler doubled and fouled. Wood got him from the backside. Well, I, yes, they did get Scott Wood. It has been a tough first half for Scott Wood. Kyle Singler's been attacking him on the offensive end, and Wood just isn't had, hasn't had any room to breathe, much less shoot the ball when he's on offense. Dan, let's take a look at our Haviland defensive shield. And you see the three-point shooting defense. And as you can also see, NC State has been better than that tonight. The Wolfpack very selective in their three-point shooting. One of the reasons why a lot of people aren't surprised that Wake beat North Carolina tonight is the job they did against Coach K's perimeter game on Sunday night. The problem for them was after they shut down the perimeter, the Plumley brothers went off. 34-31, North Carolina State. Singler's done a great job against Wood. Began, nice find. And we have seen that consistently in the first half. Farnell Began has been able to use his speed to get inside the Duke defense to draw def to draw help defenders and then find the open man. Richard Howell got that easy one. Howell with the rebound, out to Gonzalez. Again, late getting it to Smith, and it's turned over. Nolan Smith, the pilfer, out to Thomas. Duke wins in that transition, a 4-0 swing. Well, if you're going to get out in transition against Duke, it's a good way to score easy baskets before they can set their defense. But if you turn it over in transition, they're coming right back at you. Just a brilliant play by Nolan Smith. Howell. Nice face-up game. He has four. Mahal had a big game in the Wolfpack's last game against Clemson. A lot of people were wondering whether that's his breakout game. We'll see. Another rebound for him. And Farnell again has got the Jets going. All the way to the rack. Too strong. Mason Plumley clears. And a quick timeout called by Mike Krzyzewski. 1-13 remaining. And a five-point lead for North Carolina State. You think of the Duke big three through the decades, they've had them. Oh, the soft lefty, Jack Marin, along with Bob Berger and Mike Lewis. Then came Spinarkel, the G-Man, and Gene Banks. In the 80s, Dawkins, Allery, and Henderson. In the 90s, Leitner, Hill, and Hurley. And uh, in this century, Pattier, Williams, and Boozer. An ACC title for each, and of course, national championships along the way and trips to the Final Four. Now, obviously, you have that kind of success when you have great players, and that's a roll call yes, of is. great players in the ACC right there. And, of course, the big three for these guys, we've talked it about a couple, a couple times already tonight. Kyle Singler, John Shire, Nolan Smith. Nolan Smith has been just a steadying influence tonight, Dan, in so many respects. Whenever they've been on the ropes, he's made a play as he did in transition a few moments ago. 
And here's that post-up move that has caused NC State so much problem. Singler, number 12. The double team got over a little bit late. North Carolina State, eight of their last ten, and even with that kind of shooting clip, only up by three. That's really a good job by Duke coming out of that timeout. Smith, right over Thomas. I mean, that is so easy. If you get it to him on time, Dan, he's unstoppable. Big guy in the post is only open for a fraction of a second, and he's got to have the ball at that optimum moment or he gets covered up. Not as if the Devils are going to be shy about covering him. One thing they have not done, though, is double. Five-second discrepancy between the shot and game clock. There's a steal by Howell and then the foul. Singler picks up the foul, his first. That might end up not being a bad foul because Howell only a 58% free throw shooter and that's only Singler's first foul. And it's a one and one. If he misses it, it's like a turnover coming back the other way. We talked about his game against Clemson. 14 yes. points, 12 rebounds. This is a powerfully built young man. He operates very effectively around the basket. Played a big role, Dan, and that comeback after North Carolina State was listless in the opening half. And he's got five points in the first half here. He's made a big contribution off the bench. Plenty of time for Duke. Down by six with the clock winding down. A rejection by Smith. Nolan Smith! Oh, my goodness! What a play! The silent assassin. Right when you need it. Just when you feel they're on the ropes. A dagger from Nolan Smith. He's got a dozen. How big is this? Dyer gets the shot blocked, and Smith knows he doesn't have time to come down, so he catches the ball while he's already in his shot motion. Watch, he goes off his feet, knows he doesn't have time to come back down, lets it go. That is a fabulous play. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, those are the kind that uh, we remember from back in the day from Daddy Derek. That was just fantastic. Wow. 41-38 at the break, NC State here in ACC Basketball. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Toyota, by Geico, by Chick-fil-A, by Gatorade, by Hardy, and by Progress Energy. Hardy's presents the Hardy's Halftime Report here at the RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. The North Carolina State Wolfpack 41 to 38 over number seven Duke. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner. Of, oh, what an entertaining first half, and particularly the way it ended. Well, it really was an entertaining first half, and I think it was because both teams were able to score fairly effectively. It wasn't that the defense was bad, but the teams were able to find weaknesses, and so it's very interesting when we have that kind of flow to the game. Yeah, indeed. Well, the history and tradition, passion that we have in ACC basketball. There's Tom Burleson being honored along with uh, Vic Molladet, whom we mentioned uh, earlier. The thing that I notice about Molladet, uh, the number back in the 50s, number 73. Well, obviously a tremendous tradition here at North Carolina State and Vic Molladet from the 1950s. And then Tom Burleson from the great teams in the early 70s. Key factor in that national championship team of 1974, the undefeated team in 1973. Molladet shooting set shots and then guard Monty Tal with the alley-oops to Burleson and of course David Thompson and you see the NCAA scoreboard including ACC scores North Carolina again first time since 2003 going down for a third consecutive time Michigan State beating Iowa tonight Georgetown a bit of a surprise over Pittsburgh uh, Jamie Dixon's club has been playing so well all year and how about that victory for Temple if they can hold on in the second half. Connecticut beating St. John's, of course, without Jim Calhoun. George Blaney taking over the reins as he has been uh, 
taking a leave of absence because of uh, illness. Villanova uh, leading Rutgers. Brigham Young over uh, Wyoming. And also at halftime, you see West Virginia leading Marshall in the first half. Kansas trailing Baylor in the first half by two. We mentioned Nolan Smith. How good is this? Get a great defensive play, loose ball situation, and a leaping leaner from Nolan. Log on to the ACC.com for all of your information on Atlantic Coast Conference Sports. Check out the conference's exclusive online content, and don't forget to sign up for the new fan sections on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The ACC.com is your one-stop shop for all things ACC. North Carolina State leading this one at halftime, 41-38. I don't think there's any question Virginia has been the lead story in the conference as we take a look now at the standings by Toyota. And you'll see that there they are, perched atop. We've updated these uh, standings from the game played earlier in Chapel Hill with Wake Forest beating North Carolina. The Heels suddenly with seven losses and one and three in conference play. Maryland really playing well of late. Gravis Vasquez has caught fire to go along with a Clemson team that probably thinks it should have a better record than it currently has. Oh, the popcorn is cooking. Enjoy it. Second half ought to be great. At halftime, North Carolina State leading by three. Tim Brando, Dan Bonner. They've done so many good things, and yet Duke responded with those second chance points off the offensive glass and got back into the thick of it. Tim, you're absolutely right. North Carolina State shot 64% in the first half, led by Tracy Smith, who was seven for eight. He scored early and often. Dennis Horner hit one three-point basket, but he did a nice job posting up inside as well. Nolan Smith got the Blue Devils started, and then, of course, he ended the half with that three-pointer. Kyle Singler did a nice job with some mismatches on the inside. He is the other double-figure scorer in the game. He has 12 points as well, and as you mentioned, Tim, I think the key stat right there, 11 offensive rebounds, 12 second-chance points for the Duke Blue Devils. We talked about the key to the game for Duke being the extras. When you only short shoot 42%, you've got to go and get some offensive boards, and they did. What an entertaining second 20 minutes we should see here in Raleigh. ACC Basketball is brought to you by Haviland. By Woodman of the World Life Insurance Society. By Sonic Drive-In. By CPI Security. By your Carolina Chrysler dealer. And by Red Lobster. Second half action about to get underway. We'll see how the um, the other two teams in the triangle area finish things off in what has been an event-filled night. Here in the uh, I-40 at 85 corridor, Singler committing the foul against Wood, trying to launch a three. That's the second foul on Kyle Singler. And you know that NC State at halftime set up that first play to go to Scott Wood because Scott Wood in the first half had no field goal attempts. The only numbers he put on the scorebook in the first half, he makes that free throw. He had one foul and one assist. Talk about the most points in an ACC game, including Wood against Florida State. The other two coming against uh, Duke, those big moments for North Carolina State personnel. Well, his, and Ernie Myers. Wood's performance against Florida State in a road win against a tough defensive team was really incredible. Wood has been in double figures in five of his last six games, averaging over 14 in that span. The only problem is, Tim, to get there, you actually have to attempt some shots. Yeah, yeah. Mason Plumley taking it right to the baseline. Offensive foul. Good play by Horner. And that's the third foul on young Mason Plumley. Horner was just standing there waiting for him. That you're right, Tim. An excellent defensive play, anticipating where the ball's going and getting there first. And Brian Kersey hearing a little from Mike Shashevsky after that call. Horner backdoor from Farnold again. What a good start to the second half. 
Really good start for NC State. That's what they needed. Well, Lee, that's a double dribble. Actually, he walked. Thought about putting it on the deck and then took an extra step. Arnold DeGan has really had an impact on the game, making plays for other people. That was just an outstanding pass inside, and Horner, give him a lot of credit. He got the ball off very quickly before Duke could react. 11 turnovers for Duke. Uh, most of those coming in the first seven minutes. They had seven turnovers in the first seven minutes of action tonight. They improved in that area later in the first half. Horner had that one go halfway down the cylinder and out. Shire only one field goal in the first half. Make that two. He knows it's there whenever he wants it. He'll be very judicious in his game while leading this team as the point guard. Now, despite just having one field goal in the first half, he had seven points, so now he's in double figures. Gonzalez. Oh, the oh, nice pass. Smith. oh, Javier. Serve it up, if you please. 16 now for Tracy Smith. If Zubek is going to leave Smith to cover the dribbler, somebody has to rotate down. Duke doing a very poor job of that so far. Zubek. Well, that was a heck of a move by Zubek. Just didn't quite finish. Corner with the rebound. Zubek has improved. Much more confident player. Smith. Right past Zubek. Well, he may be more confident, but he's not any quicker, and Smith went right past it. Yes, he did. Wow. 18 for Smith. They're on their feet in Raleigh. This is just a great play. It's Smith, once again, he has hurt the Blue Devils inside. They're enjoying it here at the RBC Center. Student body, fans out, percussion section going. And during the timeout, Mike Krzyzewski got the attention of his captain, John Shire, and Shire became the coach on the floor, really talking to his fellow players. That's uh, the tradition of Duke. The lead guard takes over. Well, Duke needs to do a much better job on the defensive end. Just too many easy opportunities for NC State. Off the front iron, not there for Shire. Javier Gonzalez with numbers. Good defensive transition for Duke. I'm impressed with the way Duke continues to find Scott Wood, even in transition. Kyle Singler running the court found him. You know, this is a, this is a young man. You can see he looks a little thin, uh, and, and he obviously needs to put on some weight. But he moves well without the ball, and Singler's just stayed with him, particularly in transition situations where you think the young man could get open. A real specialty of Mike Krzyzewski coach teams: find a couple of lethal offensive players and just absolutely shut them down in a given game. Gonzalez, oh, falling away. Gonzalez coming out of the doldrums tonight. He's got seven and has made a strong contribution with assists. And there's Nolan Smith with a quick response. 14 for Nolan. Wood. He got away from Shire that time. Wow, that time they found him in transition and prevented him from shooting the three, but he got the two. Nice play by Scott Wood. Zubek sets the pit for Shire. And he rattles it home. Look out for John Shire to start taking this game over a bit out of that last time out. Obviously, Duke needs to tighten it up on the defensive end, Tim, but they are not shooting the ball very well. They've got to get the ball to go in the basket a little bit here. Corner again. That's a nice job by Zubek. He got out there and got his hand up. Nice pass to Smith from Shire. And it rejected by Tracy Smith. And it deflected off Nolan. Wolfpack get it back. Boy, that is a heck of a play by the big guy running in transition. Yep. Really good body control because Smith adjusted his shot. Nolan Smith adjusted his shot, and Tracy Smith just stayed right with it. And it was all leather. Julius Mays back in the game with the dump down to Horner. Good pass again. Back door. What a beauty by Horner. A wraparound bounce pass entry to Tracy Smith. 
I don't think you should leave Tracy Smith to go double team anybody. Zubek fouled by Horner. Timeout over four minutes gone in the second half. Horner picks up his third foul. Tracy Smith has been a huge factor in the game for North Carolina State. Here in the second half, he's done a great job just hanging around the basket. And when guys drive, he finds the open area, and he's been doing it on the defensive end. Well, I guess it is. Yeah, he's uh, one shy of his number. He's 22. Speaking of numbers, 10 for 11, are you kidding? That's pretty good. Zubek nails the first free throw. Brian Zubek, if you look at his overall numbers, the contribution he's made in points and rebounds, he is solid in his improvement from just a season ago, and he's been logging far more minutes early in this season than he has in any other year. Now the Duke Blue Devils drop back into a zone defense, a 1-2-2 look with Kyle Singler out on the top. Lots of times this, when you switch to a defense like this, it, it really slows down a team that has had great movement. And so far today, North Carolina State has had that great movement. Smith backs in, finds a little place. Ball weather, though. Tie ball with six on the clock, and it's going over to Duke on the alternate position. See, the other thing, you go to that zone defense, and when Smith tries to make that move inside, there's guys who are in the area. It's not a matter of bringing somebody off another offensive player. T.R. Woodman of the Royal Scoreboard. They were in a close one right now with Kansas. A foul underneath. Zubek that time doing a great job running the court. Tracy Smith fell down going for the ball, and Zubek was loose on the inside. That's a big guy to be loose on the inside. <laughs> Second foul on Scott Wood. You figure he and Tracy Smith will have a beard off before the game is over. <laughs> Close captioning for tonight's telecast provided by Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits. You gotta want to need it. Gonna have a Bojangles. Well, before long, we've got a ZZ Top concert going on down there, right? <laughs> I know, and another a bunch of guys from Lancaster. I know, I'll get emails about 70s references again. <laughs> Five minutes deep in the second half of North Carolina State by seven. Air ball taken down by Shire. Singler off the front iron. Wood retrieves it. Well, that's a great job by DeGan to get himself stopped without committing a charge and without traveling. Let's see how North Carolina State handles this zone. It's two possessions now. They haven't scored on either one. One turnover, one air ball. And Brian got his left arm in there and picked up a cheapy against Tracy Smith. And that is a cheapy. Nolan Smith asking him, you know, what are you doing? You don't really need to come over no, uh, Tracy Smith's back 15 feet away from the basket. One of those uh, issues where a player sometimes forgets. Oh my, we are in a zone, aren't we? And Mike Krzyzewski has, uh, has utilized zone a lot more in recent years. Now, that isn't to say that he plays it that often, but his old pal Jim Beheim would be proud seeing the length of his team with all those frontline players going to a zone concept. We've got big guys and long arms, right. pretty athletic guys. And you know, with the way most teams shoot these days in college basketball, if you can keep a team out of the middle, you can generally be pretty successful. And that's where North Carolina State's been making their living tonight, right around the basket. As it drives to the goal of Tracy Smith getting inside very close. You notice, however, Kyle Singler out here in the zone paying a lot of attention to making sure he finds Scott Wood. Shot clock. Down to six. Again, trying to add lift. Found Hill ball. What a pass. What a beautiful pass by DeGand into Howard. Tim before the pass. It's a beautiful drive to the basket. He changes speed a couple of times, gets through that zone defense. The reason you play zone is to prevent penetration. Guys aren't supposed to be able to do that, but that is a tremendous drive by Farnold DeGand. Up until that time, 
Well, the zone had really worked beautifully, but uh, the game speed, and I think you're right, the fact that he had that extra gear is what allowed him to find that crease in the zone. And a reach in foul by Smith. Uh, another one a bit cheap away from the basket against Thomas. That's the third. And in a close game, it's those cheapies that will creep up and cost you a lot. Nice inbounds to Singer. Missed an easy one. Boy, NC State was just asleep on that play. Thomas with the push of Mays. Well, I think Duke, they would take that last inbounds play to Kyle Singler 100 think? times out of 100. You think? And he's usually going to make that one. NC State, they just they looked like they weren't prepared. Stay with the zone. Gotta make sure you find wood. You cannot be the zone simply dribbling the ball on the outside. The ball's got to move in and out and from side to side. Mays. Okay, what do I know? He did answer off the bounce. But you're right. Uh, at the very, it's obvious North Carolina State's answer is up against the clock, a guard. Simply ad living against the shot clock. No points in the last couple of minutes for Duke. Singler on the wing. Gracie Smith collects the rebound. Where they continue their poor shooting, but unlike in the first half, they're not getting all those rebounds. Wood! Way in the wood! Eight for the freshman from Marion, Indiana. All eight in the second half, and that's the first time he's gotten loose from three. Shire off the curl. Howell the rebound. DeGan has wood on the wing. Didn't find him in time. But DeGan lost control of the ball. Timmy was trying to get it to Wood, but he just got going too fast. Now the time before he does get it to Wood. This is in transition. Singler a little bit slow coming out, and I'm telling you, Scott Wood does not need a lot of time or a lot of room. That gets everybody going in this building. Duke now back to the man-to-man. 14-point -man. lead, game's largest for North Carolina State. A steal by Nolan Smith, right when you have to have a play. The silent assassin attacks. Shire the follow. Boy, is Nolan Smith good when it counts. That's just poor ball handling by North Carolina State. Wow. Smith has had a heck of a game. Yeah. Well, both Smiths in the game. <laughs> Great games. Nolan uh, in the black and blue, and uh, North Carolina State's Tracy Smith. Timeout. This heavyweight matchup along Tobacco Road is picking up steam. Don't go away. Well, the last time the Wolfpack beat the Blue Devils in the regular season, 2004, when number one Duke came to Raleigh, Marcus Melvin scored 18, and Julius Hodge had 14 of his 18 points in the second half as the Pack beat the Blue Devils 78-74. Memorable win on this floor. Right now they lead by a dozen with 11.42 remaining. Sydney Lowe's club has been playing hard. All season long, and their record perhaps not indicative of how well they played. You look at the numbers from that Wake Forest win, it really was the brothers Plumley that carried them. Tonight, not at all the same story. Well, you go from 30 points and 20 rebounds to two points and three rebounds. And uh, the big three, Singler and Nolan Smith particularly taking over in this game. Or John Shire, I beg your pardon, and Smith. Singler has struggled some with his shot. Now, remember, there's still plenty of time left to go in this game, and North Carolina State needs to take good shots. That time, Howell had the open three, but he's only two for nine coming in. I would not classify that as a particularly good one. Well, Shire took it in. He was hammered, hitting the deck. Foul on Julius Mays. Well, Raycom Sports is on Twitter for important TV updates, ACC scheduling info. Highlight and archive video links and more. Follow us. Go to twitter.com slash Raycom Sports. One thing that you can be sure of, Tim, is Duke is going to continue to attack. 
and that man will lead to the tank. And you got to be careful. You don't want to put him on the free throw. No, you don't. He has not had one of his better shooting nights tonight, but he can still score by getting to that free throw line. A lot of time left to go. Singler is four for 13. They want to get him involved and a little bit more from Shire because Nolan Smith is just scorching the nets. There's Singler on the offensive glass, and he's fouled. Now that's that that looked looked more like the first half Tim Shire went in there and knew he had no shot and threw it up on the rim and Duke went and got it with the offensive rebound. That one against uh, Tracy Smith is second. And this, this is a Duke team. They're struggling shooting the ball, but they would continue to attack the baskets and get their points from the free throw line. You get that close to the cup, there will probably be contact. Mason Plumley touched that one last. North Carolina State gets it back. You know, in a lot of ways, Dan, that loss to Florida on that 75-footer from Chandler Parsons. That took a lot of air out of this NC State team. When you're a young club and you lose a game that way, it can be tough. Right? They're trying to rebound from that tonight. And Horner, with another solid baseline drive, gets the lead right back up to 13. Well, that's a mis mismatch against Plumley in the favor of Horner on the outside. Now down on the inside, Plumley has the advantage. But good defense and good blocking. Three on two, Gonzalez pumps. Duke has only made one field goal in the last six minutes. On the drive, another loose ball. That was Horner that knocked it away from Singler. What a great job by Shire to get back and prevent the three. That was tremendous transition defense. He prevented the three and still bothered the two of Scott Wood. Shire on the other end, short arm that one a bit. Tracy Smith the rebound. And Sidney Lowe is telling the guys, hey, calm down. They've got the 13-point lead. Tracy Smith's been wearing them out inside. Maybe they ought to consider throwing the ball to number 23. Yeah, they've had a couple of quick shots. The one, the last trip down by Wood, I think, uh, bothered Sidney. That time, Horner rattled it home. Play like you have the lead because you do. You see that 11-3 run in the last five and a half minutes. Boy, Thomas just lost it out of bounds. Tim, you remember early in the game, Duke was able to take the ball and get right to the basket, and yeah. we talked about how NC State had to tighten up the defense. Well, I think you can say that NC State has tightened up that defense. It has not been as easy for Duke. The Blue Devils have turned it over 14 times. The thing that kept Duke in the game in the first half was their offensive rebounding and scoring after the offensive rebounds, but they have not been able to do that in the second half. Brandenburg has come under the floor, into the floor of the game for North Carolina State. Pick number 14 down on the low block. Nice backdoor Hunter from Gonzalez. Nolan Smith had him, was trying to switch back to a guard, but miscommunication, and Hunter gets an easy one. Singler feeds Zubek. Too strong, but he's fouled. It goes Vandenberg. That's Vandenberg. This is very interesting. Horner just goes right to the basket. Nolan Smith was guarding him and was trying to switch out with Kyle Singler, and he didn't realize it was Dawkins. And Dawkins, you see, put his palms up, not knowing what he was supposed to do. He didn't want to switch on to Horner. Dan, I'm looking at Mike Krzyzewski across the way, and he's beginning to take on that appearance as though, all right, this may not be a good night but my guys have got to fight through this. There are times when psychologically Coach K will say, okay, we've made adjustments. You guys have to play. And I'm beginning to get the feeling, just watching the demeanor along the sidelines here with the 836 encounter. Times in the regular season, uh, 
Lessons need to be taught. He's uh, taking on that appearance that uh, we've gone zone, we've made some adjustments. You guys have to make some plays. You certainly do just had a difficult time making shots, but I think you've got to give the North Carolina State defense a lot of credit for that. Oh, that rainbow almost went for Gonzalez. It's pulled down by Zubat. Still a lot of time left in the game, though, Tim. One for ten in the last eight and a half minutes. Shires fouled. Was he beyond the arc? He was. It'll be three shots. Wood picks up the personal. That's his third. His third. And the 17th. I think this is where Mike and it, no one understands the human condition in coaching quite like Mike Krzyzewski. He knows John Shire is a veteran player, and this team has good chemistry. And at a certain point, I believe, and he's done this with every team he's ever had. He'll just say, okay, you guys have to figure this thing out because we've done what we can do here along the sideline. Try Sonic's Everyday Value Menu. It delivers the great variety of food you would expect, but all for only $1 all day, every day. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Tim, and the other thing that Mike Krzyzewski knows from all his years in coaching is that some days you get the bear and some days the bear gets you. <laughs> That's right. And in this case, it's the wolf pack. Yeah. This team is far better than their record would indicate. And uh, it's a cause game. I remember the late uh, Jim Valvano just came into this league at the same time Krzyzewski did. And uh, we talked about cause games. Well, for his old guard, Sidney Lowe, coaching his team. This is a cause game. Tracy Smith takes it right into the paint and is fouled by Zubek. Blue Devils a paltry one for ten in the second half in the last eight minutes. And the lead catapults to a Baker's dozen for the Wolfpack. Dennis Horner playing in the ball game with a bruised knee has nonetheless really, really played well. He had 10 points in the first half, and he has continued to take advantage of mismatches that have presented themselves. He's got eight in the second half, shooting the ball very well. The Wolfpack shooting the ball very well. The Duke defense has simply not had an answer for NC State so far tonight. Now he's the experienced hand, Dan, with this team, along with Gonzalez. And uh, if he can help Tracy yeah, Smith in that front line area, and he's, he's shown a lot of versatility in his game, it makes this North Carolina State team much more difficult to deal with. One of the rare misses from either the line or the floor by Smith. 70 to 56, North Carolina State. Uh, this is a spot in the game where Duke needs to put together a little run to tighten it up here as we go down the stretch. Why not call on Nolan Smith with a finger roll then? 70 to 58. Hey, that guy's just done it all tonight. 16 for him. Now, stops have been few and far between for the Blue Devils tonight, but they need to string a couple of them in a row here. Well, they've deserted the zone experiment for the moment. Smith giving it up to Horner on the wing. Josh Davis on the offensive glass. Snuck in there and got one. That's well, really frustrating. Duke got the stop, but then NC State got another possession. You take that much more time off the clock, and if you're able to get it to your big gun and he scores, look out, Gonzalez. Sidney Lowe's okay with that. They took a lot of time off the clock in that sequence. Shire, Singler, Lance Thomas, Brian Zubek, and Nolan Smith, the five on the floor for Coach Gay. Singler's fouled by Davis as he decided to drive the baseline. And the Woodman of the World scoreboard. Kansas now number three in the country, extending their lead against uh, Baylor. Ole Miss, that was a team that's got uh, a great backcourt. Look out for Tariqa White and uh, Chris Warren. 
as the season progresses. And uh, earlier tonight, just down the road in Chapel Hill, Wake Forest, a huge win for Dino Gaudio's club. We've got Virginia coming up next. What a schedule at Duke, at Carolina, then Virginia. And at the beginning of the year, you were probably looking at that schedule as a Wake fan saying, oh, yeah, okay, Virginia. <laughs> After road games at Duke and, and uh, North Carolina, we'll, we'll take that one. Not so fast. Not this year. Tony Bennett's club has really been a story. Now the Blue Devils going to come with some pressure. North Carolina State has had times, has had problems handling the ball at times this year. Well, Duke now amping up the pressure with an 8-1 run of their own. And they force a timeout with 6.24 remaining. And as you mentioned, just when you need uh, to mount a bit of a challenge, that's exactly what Coach K's team has done out of that last time off. Food Lion and Pepsi have teamed up again this year for the Sink One Score Million Sweepstakes. Three lucky contestants will win a trip to the ACC tournament with a chance to take a half-court shot for $1 million. Visit foodlion.com for more details. Food Lion and Pepsi are proud official corporate partners of the ACC. And coming up this weekend, Trapani will lead BC. And of course, when you talk about Malcolm Delaney, you're talking about one of the great players who go along with Landisburg of Virginia and the Demon Deacons. Go to acc.com for more information on the games coming in as uh, we have an outstanding matchup coming your way. Uh, great time sports network. Boston College last night in Miami came back from 17 down in the second half to come away with a road win. Just when you thought they were dead, here they come back. Quick double team of Gonzalez. Thomas got a, on the floor, got the loose ball. We got a scrum and a tie ball, one would think, with the arrow to North Carolina State. Fans wanted to travel immediately, but he had not corralled possession of the ball and had not made a basketball move. Gonzalez is trying to knock the ball off the foot of an end of a Duke player and knock it out of bounds. And, you know, Lance Thomas, you like to see a guy go on the floor that generally denotes pretty good hustle. But, Tim, I think that's a play where the ball was, there was nobody around the ball. He just needs to run after that thing, pick it up. Duke would have had a turnover as it is. North Carolina State gets the ball back. One of the things the teams have struggled, and this North Carolina State team has in conference play, one of the issues is usually not being able to finish. Can they tonight? Wood not there. Smith, put back opportunity, goes awry on a foul. Underneath. Duke goes back to the zone, and sometimes in the zone, it's difficult to find your blockout responsibilities, and North Carolina State does a great job on the offensive board, sort of turning the tables on Duke. Kyle Singler's third foul. Order with one and one. Well, you give Duke an opportunity to carve into that lead yet again. Zubek counted in a foul. That was tremendous determination and strength by Nolan Smith. He's trying to drive to the basket. NC State cut him off a couple of times, but he finds Zubek inside. That's a nice soft pass. Porter steps to the ball, and Zubek is able to corral it and score despite the foul. With 8.54 remaining, that wasn't that long ago. North Carolina State led by 17. Smith, fouled by Zubek. You know, as the Duke Blue Devils have tried to increase the pressure on the ball, North Carolina State has been able to do a better job getting by. 
out on the perimeter. Smith at the strike. 62%. Close catching in for tonight's telecast provided by Bojangles. Famous chicken and biscuits. You gotta want to need to get a half of Bojangles. Lead back to 10. Shire. That leaner won't go. Smith tries to save it. Last touch deflected by Thomas. It belongs to the Wolfpack. That was a bit of force by John Shire. He's trying to get the ball to the basket and draw a foul or throw it up on the board, figuring his guys can go get the offensive rebound. Miles Plumlee replaces Brian Zubak, who has got four fouls. Arnold again, trying to blow by Thomas. Corner rejected by Thomas. Plumlee clears. Nolan Smith with a tray off the front iron. Look at Nolan stay with it. Never gives up on the play. So they're working on Wood. The leaner goes. Timeout. Mike Krzyzewski. 446 left. And the lead is eight. Duke's big three trying to mount a comeback here. Farnold again slips, and because he slips, the pass to Horner really isn't on time. The block shot results, and then Kyle Singler, the first thing he does in this play is make an outstanding catch, and then as we have seen him do throughout the game, he puts the ball down and goes right around Scott Wood on the perimeter. I'd say the wrist is okay. Well, that's certainly the wrist move. is okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a tough move. A strong move, you gotta have, uh, you know, I've oftentimes said, Dan, you played in this league and played in the interior. If you're strong from the elbow down and your hands are that good, you're going to score a lot in traffic. Wow, strong from the elbow down. I yeah. don't know I've never heard that before. <laughs> I thought that, you know, Singler, we've seen him with some incredible drives throughout his career, but over there, he actually saved the turnover with an outstanding catch of the basketball. Duke now with 15 offensive rebounds in the game. Remember, 11 of those came in the first half. They're able to get their pressure going. Out of the timeout. Wood has numbers. Horner with him. Not a lot that Plumlee can do right there. He's not a shot blocker. 10 in the game for Scott Wood all of the second half. Singler is fouled. And Wood's hurt. Wood got smacked right in the face. Horner yeah. picked up the foul, his fourth. Once again, Kyle Singler trying to go by. And he pulls up for the shot, and it's Singler's hand that goes out and slaps Wood right in the face while Horner's committing the foul against Singler. Singler is 7 of 8 tonight at the line. Well, these free throws obviously become very, very important. And now the character of this NC State team changes a little bit as Howell comes in the game. He's much more of an inside muscle man than Horner is. Horner has really given them valuable minutes, particularly with his ability to threaten on the perimeter. You do get that feeling, though, don't you, Dan? That North Carolina State, as well as they played tonight, they find themselves hanging on, hanging on to the four minute and under timeout. And then still trying to remain aggressive while utilizing clock with each possession. Can they finish? Psychologically, that could become problematic. Shot clock down to six. Gonzalez, a tough shot. Just be there night. Smith is fouled. 
There's no way this ball can go in the basket. I mean, this is as well defended as you can possibly defend it by the Duke Blue Devils, but what a shot by Gonzalez to lead 11. Want to see highlights of ACC basketball? Check out the Hamilton ACC basketball highlights now online. You can view action from all Raycom ACC basketball telecasts and other archive video. Log on to RaycomSports.com or the ACC.com for these clips and more. This would be a fun one to watch, would it not? What an entertaining game. It really has been entertaining. And North Carolina State, what a what a great shot by Javier Gonzalez. And as you said, Tim, sometimes it's just your night, but there's still enough time left in this game that Duke can respond. However, the Blue Devils are gonna have to get some stops. And as I've said before, they haven't gotten very many of them tonight. North Carolina State has worked hard and earned this lead. But uh, Duke is uh, a different animal when coming from behind. They know how to attack, and for them, uh, they feel the need to prove that wearing the dark uniforms, they can get it done just as they do seemingly always at Cameron well, Indoor Stadium. Tim, and that's a good point. Again, this is only the third true road game of the season for the Duke Blue Devils. They lost the other two and did not perform very well in those two games. Timeout taken by State as they were about to get tied up. ACC Basketball has been brought to you by Pepsi. By your Carolina Jeep dealers. And by Food Lion. Tim, we talked earlier about big threes in Duke history and their big three this year, Nolan Smith, John Shire, and Kyle Singler. These three guys, they have scored the bulk of the points tonight for the Duke Blue Devils, but they have had to work very hard to get those points, and they've taken a lot of shots. So you can see there, they're scoring points, but Shire only four for 13, Singler only five for 14. They have had to work very hard as that low shooting percentage attests. Expending uh, quite a bit of energy, you're right. Duke's other two road games, a loss at Wisconsin and a loss at Georgia Tech. Again, what a move. What a move on the defense. Did everything but finish, but an offensive tap out by Smith affords them a second chance to run clock. Smith has just been magnificent tonight. He's just had a really, really solid game. Nolan Smith is going to pick up the foul. Good hesitation by Javier Gonzalez to induce that foul. His second. Look at our game reset. A couple of timeouts left for both. Double foul situation on the other end of the floor. Gonzalez at the free throw line now. His first of the night. And you would expect it here in the last 254. The Wolfpack are going to have some opportunities from the free throw line. You know, this is a place where early in the season the Wolfpack struggled shooting free throws, but over the last few games they seemingly have that particular difficulty worked out. The lead back to 11. Duke will have to do it quickly now. Really some balanced scoring by North Carolina State this evening. Singler. 79-70. Duke sets up the pressure. 21 in the game now for Kyle Singler. Ooh, dangerous pass. Smith bailed out Horner. North Carolina State content to work the clock right at the moment. Shire went for the pick. Horner pumps. Big bucket for Horner. He's got 20. Now Duke may have to think about fouling if they don't get some turnovers, provided they score here. First things first. Singler is fouled by Horner. 
Horner just fouled out of the game, but this is a nice move by Horner to catch the ball. Found the shot clock running down, and he knocks it home. And as he's coming down the court, Tim, I think he's telling Sidney Lowe that his knee is really bothering him. Yeah. And he commits the foul, so he's going to have the opportunity to rest. Again, he bruised that knee in the game against Florida State. And it's one of those injuries where it's not going to get any worse if he plays on it. And it's, uh, whether he plays on it or not, it's going to take a while to get better. But certainly he played through some pain tonight and played very, very well. You got congratulations to Pete Strickland, a tough defensive-minded assistant, along with Bonnie Town, Larry Harris over there on the uh, state sideline. Only the second miss at the strike for Sigler tonight. The lead down to 10 with 158 to play. Well now at the 10 point game, you've got to get the ball and you've got to make some threes. You don't want to foul him. <laughs> they do need a foul, and Shire picks it up on Gonzalez. Sixty-four percent free throw shooter. Not a bad idea to get him. You did not want to foul Wood when he had the basketball. Well, Gonzalez just went to the free throw line and made two. And Javier Gonzalez has shown us that while he may be a 64% free throw shooter overall, he can make some big shots. Now he's made three in a row from the free throw line. Of course, made that tremendous yeah. three-point shot. Dan, I, I think as we look back in turning points are big moments in the game, that three after Duke had played them very well defensively in that half-court sequence was absolutely huge. Gave them the... Uh, the distance from Duke that they absolutely had to have. Shire in traffic had it knocked away. Mike Szeski asking for a foul. Steve Wojciechowski asking for it a bit more loudly. <laughs> now Wojciechowski doesn't carry the uh, <laughs> no, that's weight true. of Mike Szeski home. Shire. Oh, the iron unkind. Shire picks up the garbage deuce on the seat of his pants. He goes down. Timeout Duke. Timeout Duke. 82-73, a minute 24 remaining. I think this shot, Dan, if, if North Carolina State's lead holds up, this will be the shot that everyone remembers in terms of putting this baby where it needed to be for State to hold on and win. This is a 6'10 guy right in his face, and he's a good five steps beyond the three-point arc. This is not a shot that you expect to go in the basket, but it touches nothing but the net. In fact, barely ripples the net. If he doesn't make that shot, then Duke gets the ball opportunity to cut it to base seven with a two, six with a three, with under four minutes to play in the game. Could have changed the, the way the last three and a half minutes played out. Well, Javier Gonzalez is a guy who's really been criticized, and one of the question marks about NC State is their point guard position. And generally, when people say that, they're talking about this guy right here, Javier Gonzalez. But particularly this year, Tim, he has shown that in the last 10 minutes of games, that's his time. Yeah. He has really has great numbers at the end of all games. Well, I think uh, the emergence of the game as well has helped. Reach in foul committed by Dawkins. Well, tonight's broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom Sports and the ACC is prohibited. Lance Thomas actually got tagged with that foul rather than Dawkins. Began a 61% free throw shooter. This is a uh, critical period within the uh, schedule of the Duke Blue Devils. Well, she could say that at any time in the ACC. We've got a return engagement coming up soon with Clemson. Well, I think the thing about the ACC this year is that everybody has enough skill and enough talent that on any given night, they can beat you. 
Singler off the back iron. Began the rebound. Fans wanting a coronation blow, and they may have gotten it. Count it, and a foul. Tim, this may be one of those plays where Singler is under the basket, and that's why it's ruled as a block. Tom Burleson certainly happy with that play. What a performance by North Carolina State. Well, this, this could change their season completely. And I think the fan base here, Dan, is, is saying, you know what, we just want to be in the discussion come late February and early March. Give us a reason to believe that we're in the discussion. And, and a win like this kind of erases the memory of that 75-footer from Chandler Parsons and says, you know what, maybe, just maybe, NC State can become relevant again when the bubble conversation begins. Smith not there. Tracy Smith the rebound. Tim, and you have to look, look at the points that North Carolina State has scored against the Duke team that gives up 61 a game. They have shredded the Duke defense. Take a look at our Pepsi players of the game. And Nolan Smith, again, just a, remains a constant for Mike Krzyzewski. And Tracy Smith, all you have to do is look at the numbers. Tracy Smith got him going early in the game. He made his first five baskets, really set the tone inside for North Carolina State. But the Wolfpack, I mean, they've gotten contributions from everybody. Scott Wood with 10 points in the second half. Dennis Warner with 20 points. Farnell began. Javier Gonzalez have played very, very well. Richard Howe came off the bench and had five rebounds. You know, this is, this is really a complete team victory for North Carolina State. Look, I, I realize that there's a lot of conversation about this program maybe being a, a year away. But for the moment, tonight... Sidney Lowe, and as, uh, as they say, waking up echoes here. And uh, a reach-in foul that he did not want there to stop the clock. Richard Howell picks up the foul. And we talked about that schedule, that return engagement at Clemson. Won't be easy. You remember what happened uh, last year at Little John for Coach K's squad. Florida State in uh, that non-conference tilt at Georgetown. He had a big uh, win tonight in the Big East. Now, certainly there's no rest this time of the season. But the Duke Blue Devils, they've got to play more effectively on the defensive end of the court for one thing, and then, you know, they, they have to make some shots. It's very difficult when you miss, when you shoot a very poor shooting percentage, that gives the other team a chance to get out and run a little bit, and NC State took advantage today. State spreading the floor, trying to utilize clock. A proud tradition, perhaps, uh, at least for tonight, reborn. At a time when this young Wolfpack team really needed it. They can just run out the clock now. Really, really impressive win. Listen to this crowd. Second conference win, and they beat number seven Duke. Perhaps Sidney Lowe's biggest conference win to date. They not only finished, they did it authoritatively, Dan. Well, they sure did. Very impressive. From start to finish, North Carolina State was in control of this game. Tonight's game produced by Rob Reichley and directed by Johnny Tice. Again, Bonner, this is Tim Brando saying so long from the RBC Center in Raleigh. North Carolina State 88, Duke 74. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on Raycom Sports.